Welcome into the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Senior. Hope all of you are having a great Saturday night after the San Francisco 49ers took down the Minnesota Vikings by a final score of 17-7 in Week 2 of the NFL preseason. This is your post-game show. Appreciate all of you for rocking and rolling with us live on the Call-In app as well as on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to us on Call-In and downloaded the app, do so right now by heading to chatsports.com slash 49ers Colin so that you can actually call into our post game shows. It's like Twitter spaces, but even better. So final score, as I said, 17 to 7 and a lot of takeaways from this game. 54 combined players between the Niners and the Vikings did not partake in this preseason game. That included a bevy of starters on both sides of the ball for San Francisco. So we got to see a lot of backups play in this game. And I understand that from a hype perspective to watch some of these backups, it can be lame, it can be slow, it can be sluggish. But in terms of depth pieces and guys trying to crack this roster, there were important positional battles and important roster battles that we saw take place tonight and a couple of big storylines that we want to take on and talk about on today's show. So just going to run through some of my game notes and, of course, want to hear from you in the comment section on YouTube and call in as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're watching us on YouTube. As far as the number two quarterback role for San Francisco, just a couple of takeaways from what Nate Sudfeld was able to do as well as Brock Purdy. And I thought it was interesting, this strategy from Kyle Shanahan. He kind of went possession by possession, putting in Sudfeld, putting in Brock Purdy, and interchanging the quarterbacks that he was going to use throughout this game tonight with Trey Lance not playing with a lot of the starters as we talked about. And I think that's an important thing to implement in some of these preseason games because you have to think of it this way. If Trey Lance were to get injured, and these backup quarterbacks were to go on the field and have to overtake Trey Lance if he were to be out for a game, they have to come in cold. So by sitting and then playing, Nate Sudfeld as well as Brock Purdy, they go cold, then they go into the game to see how they respond to certain game situations. And that's what these preseason games are all about. Two-minute drills, end of the half, trying to operate third downs as well as fourth downs on some of those critical money downs in situational type of predicaments that you find yourself in throughout the course of a football game, it's important to throw these players in these situations and see if they can go from being uncomfortable to rising up to the occasion. So for Nate Sudfeld, I thought he was accurate. I thought he threw well on the move. That ball to Tyler Croft early in the game was a nice little throw. When he drops back and he has those calm feet, Nate Sudfeld looks good. And the biggest thing for him, doesn't have the most athleticism in the world, He's not the most, you know, dynamic thrower of the football. But if he's able to be accurate on some of those in-breaking routes like Jimmy Garoppolo and come through in these timely situations, that's really important for him. And I thought that Nate Sudfeld was able to display some of that tonight. And then as far as Brock Purdy goes, as quarterback always really drives a conversation. The scoring drive behind uh, before halftime I thought was really impressive for him. You put him in a two-minute situation, he was able to thrive so that Robbie Gold was able to knock it through for a field goal before halftime. Kind of a changing point in this game. I understand it's the preseason. And Brock Purdy looked calm, cool in those types of situations. But what was bad about Brock Purdy, the fumble. When the Niners drive all the way down the field, they're on the doorstep of knocking it through and scoring a touchdown, and he fumbles the football from the half-yard line. Those types of things cannot happen so that was the big takeaway from the quarterbacks. Grade the Niners' performance, though, during this preseason game, A, B, C, D, or F, from all of these backups that we saw, let me know right now in the comments section. The biggest storyline from this entire game to me comes back to the running back battle, and particularly Trey Sermon. He just doesn't look fast. He doesn't look explosive. He is too slow to diagnose the hole, and he's way too... Happy feet in the backfield. In Kyle Shanahan's outside zone scheme, what makes some of these running backs successful, you see the hole, you hit it. You move forward in the ground game and fall forward in the ground game. But Trey Sermon oftentimes doesn't do that. And he just dances around in the backfield too often, and he doesn't have the speed to make up for that patience. And I think he's overly patient. And that's a problem with Trey Sermon. He dropped a pass on third down that would have went for a first down conversion. I think we're talking about a situation in which a third round pick from the 2021 NFL draft, his roster spot 
is in question, and it should be because of the play of Jordan Mason, the UDFA out of Georgia Tech, who does all the opposite of Trey Sermon. He runs hard. He runs decisively. He runs with more power. He has more speed. He has more explosiveness, and he always falls forward. As for Trey Sermon, I just think that when you watch him play, he's just waiting for a hole to open up when the hole is there. And because of that, he's not able to take advantage of some of the positive yards that he can gain, whereas Jordan Mason is able to do that. So I think that moving forward, Trey Sermon's roster spot is a little bit in question. Do want to tell you about our presenting sponsor, BetUS, our sportsbook go-to here at Chat Sports. A wonderful deal going on throughout the entire 2022 NFL season. And with football back, you want to be able to bet on these football games because it adds that injection of energy. And it just adds more excitement to your game viewing experience. You can do that with BetUS. And the deal that they have going on, absolutely phenomenal. If you had a chatsports.com slash 49 bet, Enter the promo code NINERS125, you get a 125% deposit bonus. What that means, you put in $100, you get an additional $125 back. That's the deal that BetUS has going on with that 125% deposit bonus. And with our chat stats, with this game being under the 39-point total in this game, the under for the Niners, 8-1 in San Francisco's last nine games so oftentimes in the last nine games for that sample size san francisco has not been prolific in scoring the football signing up with bet us today will help make your football viewing experience even better more notes from this game javon kinlow had a sack i thought that was a good sign he was one of the few starters who actually played we need to see this guy healthy former first round pick he's played 16 combined games in his first two years and up to this point he's been a bust but with that power rip-through move, he was able to get to the quarterback and drop him for a sack. And for Kinlaw, I'm not sure he has an arsenal of pass-rushing moves. He oftentimes goes to that power rush. If he is an impactful player along this Niners defensive line with Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, Samson Ebucom has had a good camp, and everybody else, it makes this Niners defense even better Really good sign that Javon Kinlaw is looking healthy. He's looking powerful. I saw a clip of him coming off the practice field against Minnesota, and he looked like one of the biggest and most in-shape players in the NFL. That's a credit to the work that he's put in throughout this offseason. More notes to get to, but I do want to ask you for your feedback in the comment section. I'm talking about some of these players who stood out to me for good reasons and bad who stood out to you the most against the Minnesota Vikings tonight? Let me know right now in the comment section. More notes to get to. Lots of punts tonight. This game was really boring. Drops and penalties. A huge point of emphasis that Kyle Shanahan has to get corrected prior to week one against the Chicago Bears on September 11th. Uh, Tanner Hudson dropped the ball. Jawan Jennings did. Trey Sermon. Those types of drops in opportunistic situations Cannot happen once a regular season comes around. The offensive line continues to be a big storyline for this football team. I thought that to start this game, they didn't really play well. And then at the end, they did. Keaton Sutherland at starting center was not good. I thought that Donovan West was a lot better. So that could come down to a roster position battle. Robbie Gold, he continues to be great for this team. Automatic in the playoffs. Hasn't missed in his last 20-plus opportunities. And so far throughout the preseason, he's been perfect. Drake Jackson did impress me a little bit. The bend and athleticism that he comes with coming off the edge, I think is a really important trait for him. And if you put him on this defensive line, he's going to get some opportunities to rush the passer playing along this loaded defensive front for San Francisco, which could allow him to have a big rookie year. He was really active for the second consecutive game. He was active last week against Green Bay, active once again. As for Jordan Mason, just want to spend some time talking about him he's a good player and let me pose this question for you is Jordan Mason a better running back and does he present better so far throughout these two preseason games compared to what you've seen from Sermon in the preseason and then last year in the regular season then Trey Sermon I think so he's just a harder runner a faster runner more explosive and when you look at the running back depth chart for this team Elijah Mitchell won Jeff Wilson, too. After that, it's really wide open. Ty Davis-Price as the rookie third-round pick out of LSU, I think is 
at number three. Jamichael Hasty offers this team really good pass catching option out of the backfield. I think that he should crack this roster. So with this team in the backfield, when it comes bound, down, excuse me, to this running back competition, it's Elijah Mitchell, Jeff Wilson, Ty Davis Price, Jamichael Hasty, and Jordan Mason. Five backs, all ahead of Trey Sermon. Look, I understand he was a third round pick a year ago. And to cut a third round pick after drafting him last year in 2021 will be a hit for this franchise. And it's a bad draft miss. There's nothing, uh, there's no doubt about that. But Trey Sermon, if there are better running backs on this team, you have to go with the better players available. And maybe with another scheme in which he can be a little bit more patient because this outside zone scheme requires you to hit the hole fast and go for it, then maybe he can find himself on his feet elsewhere with a different organization in the National Football League. But for this specific offense, with what they want, it's a little bit of a problem for Trey Sermon. So that's really going to wrap it up for our YouTube post-game show. We're going to be taking your calls live here on Call-In. Make sure you hop into the caller queue and download the Call-In app so you too can sound off and join the conversation. But before we hop on out of here for our post-game show, who disappointed you the most against the Minnesota Vikings? I think it was Trey Sermon. Make sure you give me a name right now in the comment section.